What's going on, everybody? My name is Captain Jack. I'm one of the Minecrafters, and in this tutorial, we're going to be talking about an add-on for AE2 called Advanced AE. Now, in all likelihood, you're probably here because you want to know how the quantum computing multi-block works, and we're going to get into that, um, but not before we talk about some other really awesome blocks that um, this mod adds into your game. There's some really awesome functionality that you're going to want to learn about. Um, and if you do want to navigate around or skip around to, you know, whatever piques your interest, uh, as always, there will be a uh, link to each different block in the descriptions and timestamps for your convenience. Now, before we get started here, I just want to point out that extended AE will probably um, be in the same pack as this mod. Um, if that's different in the future, I can drop a comment below and pin it. Um, but for right now, extended AE is going to be used heavily in this mod. So they're going to kind of work together as two add-ons. Um, so just for instance, here we have the crystal assembler, which is part of extended AE, which requires concurrent processors, which is, enables you to make things from the advanced AE mod, which we're here to talk about today. And this is going to require printed concurrent circuits, which is going to require an entro crystal. To make entro crystals, go ahead and craft yourself an entro seed by using this pattern here, and then right-clicking a Fluix box, and you're going to get a budding fully entrized block of Fluix, which as it grows crystals will slowly deteriorate into mostly half and hardly. Now, just like regular AE with the Certus crystals, these blocks are going to slowly deteriorate, but you can speed them up with growth accelerators. But the difference between regular Certus and these um, entro crystals is that these blocks, there's no flawless version of them, right? So as they deteriorate, you are going to have to develop some sort of automation to replace these. And if you're familiar with how to do it with regular Certus blocks, it basically works the same way. And a lot of people have come up with a lot of creative ways to do this. And that's how you get Entro crystals. The first block we're going to talk about with this mod is the reaction chamber. And the reaction chamber has a bunch of different recipes. You see, if you click through here, it's capable of making all sorts of stuff. You can have fluid in here, such as lava or water, which is required for some of these crafts. But the thing I want to focus on here are these shattered singularities. And this is going to be the recipe for those. So inside of here, if you require, if you supply it with some lava, you're going to be able to make shadowed singularities. And these are going to be used to craft some of the other components of this pack. Now let's talk about the throughput monitor. Now in a nutshell, all this block is is a storage monitor that will tell you how many of an item is leaving or entering your system at a time. You can just take a block, right click it onto here, double right click if you're trying to add a fluid, like let's say with a bucket or something on this monitor, and it will start to show you the throughput, right? So here we have 20 millibuckets a second. Um, so that's coming through from this advanced mechanical pipe into my interface here. For the logs over here, if I go ahead and make this start um, extracting out of the bin and into my system, you can see that I'm getting six logs per second. So that just gives you the throughput. And it's a really useful uh, monitor and will basically tell you if you have a net positive or, or net negative um, of an item entering or leaving your system. So really cool block. Next, we're going to talk about the advanced pattern provider and the advanced extended pattern provider. So you can use an ME pattern provider along with these items to craft directly the advanced pattern provider. Um, or you can use one of these upgrade, the advanced pattern provider upgrade, in which case you just go up to a regular pattern provider, right click, and it will change it to an advanced pattern provider. The advanced extended pattern provider is the next tier up from this. So I'm going to start with the base upgrade. I'm going to attach a regular pattern provider upgrade, and then I'm going to apply a capacity upgrade for it. So you see, before I do that, I only have one slot for patterns here. If I upgrade it to the max tier, which is advanced extended, I now have four different rows to put all these patterns in, similar to the extended pattern provider. And as always with AE, you have multi-parts. So you have the advanced extended right here as a multi-part and the regular pattern provider as a multi-part. And they work very similar or the same as the pattern providers with the exception of the extended version, which is really awesome. Now the advanced extended pattern provider is absolutely amazing. So if you don't know what this does, prepare for your mind to be blown. What you can do with this block is that you can go in to your pattern encoding terminal and you can make, let's say, a pattern for infused alloy. It's going to require a copper and a redstone, right? So we're going to encode this pattern and we're going to take it out. Next, you're going to make an advanced pattern encoder. And you're going to take that, you're going to right click it while it's in your hand, and you're going to put in the pattern for your alloy. And you have this wonderful GUI here where you can choose which direction on the machine that the advanced pattern provider is attached to these items enter or exit. So for this example, we are going to be using a metallurgic infuser. And this one advanced extended pattern provider is going to handle both the input of the special, the input of the raw material, and the output back into the system, all in one single facing. 
which is phenomenal. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna program this pattern to be able to be input and output through this one single facing of the advanced extended pattern provider. So let's go into the machine first and check out our facings. Under items configuration, we have our extra item, which will be the redstone set to be imported onto the top. And then we have our input and output, which would be the input would be the copper ingot and the output would be the actual alloy set on the left side, or in this case, it's the north facing. So go ahead and open up your pattern encoder. And we're going to say, hey, we want to put the um, copper in the north facing, and then we want to put the redstone in the up facing. And once that's done, you can pull this out and you can see if you look at the mouse over on the pattern here, it says copper goes in N, which is north and redstone goes in up, which is the top. Now you can take that advanced pattern provider, put it in your advanced extended pattern provider. And now we should be able to do a craft where the redstone goes in the top, even though this block is on the side and the input and output will be on the left side of the machine. So let's initiate the craft. We'll make 100. Next, enter. When we look at this, you can see that the redstone's being dumped in, the copper is being dumped out, and in our system, we have a slow buildup of infused alloys. This is an absolutely amazing block. All right, now let's talk about the stock export bus. So here I'm assuming some basic knowledge of applied energistics, right? Because this is pretty advanced. So I'm not gonna go into all the details about how this works, but essentially it's an export bus that you can choose to maintain certain stock levels of the adjacent block or the block that it's pointing at. So for this example, I have 10 lime dye, 20 yellow dye, 30 red dye, and 40 orange dye. And this is all being stocked in here through this stock export bus. And inside here, it's very intuitive, right? It says middle click to set the amount that you want to keep in stock. So if I middle click here, I can change this. I can set it to 40, whatever I want. And then it will automatically keep this amount of items in stock in the, the block that it's facing. So if I go ahead and take out 40 of these, the stock export bus is going to refill that back up to 40. If I take out these, these, and these, it's just going to refill right back up. And it's going to maintain stock levels just like it says and that is very cool. You obviously also have the option here to put crafting cards and acceleration cards to speed this block up a little bit. All right, let's talk about the Quantum Crafter. Now this block is pretty similar to the ME Stalker if you're familiar with that item, but it behaves a little bit differently. So let's go ahead and click on this inside here and see what's going on. So you have a bunch of different slots and these slots are for actual patterns, right? So you're gonna use a pattern encoding terminal. You're gonna encode your pattern. You're gonna put it in there and then it's gonna know how to make these items and then it's gonna keep those items in stock. So for this example, I have blocks of titanium, right? So it's gonna make 1X, um, 2X, 3X, 4X, 5X, and so on and so forth. And what you wanna do is you wanna put your pattern here and then you wanna configure how much of um, the base item you wanna keep in the system, right? So I don't necessarily care about this, but if I wanna keep you know, 100 in the system, you're gonna type in 100 and make sure you press enter, that check mark is gonna to go to green. It's gonna change from a red X to a green check mark. Um, and it's gonna make sure that it leaves at least 100 in the system, right? So that's a very good um, way to make sure that your um, quantum crafter is not using all of your resources. Then you're gonna go ahead and set the limit on how many you want to be created of these inside here. And so that's how this all works here. So I have no limit on this, um, that's for a reason. But let's go ahead and set this up for the three X blocks here. So I'm gonna configure this, I'm gonna not care about this necessarily, but I wanna have 25 of the three X blocks in the system at all times. So if I go to 23, there's gonna be an X. Again, I need to press enter, right? In order to make sure that this block, this, this number changes here. So I'm gonna say, I want my crafter to keep 25 three X blocks in the system, okay? So if you look at this, I have too many of these because I set no limit. So it's just making these indiscriminately. So let's go ahead and just turn that right off. We're gonna change this to a thousand, hit enter, and that's gonna stop, okay? Too many of these, 107K is too many. So let's turn this on, right? So I've set 25 limit, enable, and then we're gonna look into here and you can see that it's going to make 25 very quickly and it's gonna use up all the other um, blocks in order to make that and level out the um, minimum that I have set in the system. So let's go to um, let's go to 80 just so I can see it happening. We can see it happening a little bit better. Enter back. There we go. It's going to keep 80 blocks of these, and then it's going to craft everything below it to get back up um, to the minimum set stock that I have in the system. And what this block does is it does use my um, crafting CPUs, right? So this is using that big multi-block that we're about to learn about, but this will also use, or actually, no, it doesn't, I don't think, use the regular molecular assembler chambers attached to the regular pattern providers. I believe the quantum crafter does need or require um, the quantum crafting 
uh, multi-block. So let's just do one more, just, uh, just so you can see this happening. We'll have five of these set, enter. We're gonna go back, we're gonna turn this on. It's gonna use everything before it. it's gonna make five of these and then the stock and everything else is gonna go right back up. So the speed of this quantum crafter is directly tied in to the speed of your crafting CPU. There's also an option here to configure some other things. So exported items will be exported directly to ME. You can also use this item to export directly to adjacent chests. And there's this nice little GUI right here where you can have these go into some other inventory right on the top, left, north, south, east, west, top, bottom, whatever. Acceleration cards, spots for upgrades over here. Um, works pretty similar to just about everything um, in AE2. So this is a great little block. Um, it's a little bit better, in my opinion, than the Stalker. Um, but it does require you to have some, some fast infrastructure to, uh, to keep this thing going. All right. So before we go any further, I just want to make sure that everybody knows that, um, one of the things that later versions of Minecraft have is these guides, right. That are included in the mod packs, which is phenomenal, right? This is a big step forward. Maybe not so great for those of us who make tutorials, but if you hold down whatever hotkey it's set to, you can literally go in here and you can look up the advanced AE mod and it tells you every single thing that's in this mod and how it all literally works, right? So there's descriptions all over the place here. I'm not going to go over everything in here because you can literally read it for yourself. I'm just going to show you on video because that's probably why you're here because you don't feel like reading any of this stuff. All right. So the main component of these multi-blocks is the quantum computer core, right? And if you look into it, it will literally tell you that it provides 256 um, million crafting storage or megabytes of crafting storage um, and eight co-processing threads. And you can see that happening right inside here, right? So you can see there's eight co-processors and 256 amp storage, right? So you can use this all on its own to be kind of an all-in-one crafting solution. However, what you really wanna do is you wanna make these multi-blocks. Now, how do you make them and what goes inside of them? Well, it's really simple. So honestly, this is gonna be pretty quick, but I think you'll get the idea and you'll be fine once you uh, understand the concept here. We have quantum computer structures, right? So this is gonna form the entire outside of your structure. So if you're familiar with the old version of AE, you had to do the like the outside edges one block and then like the inside um, facings a different block. Nope, you just do them all quantum computer structures, right? The minimum requirements for this block is just to put a quantum computer core in here, right? So if you put this item in here and drop this in here, it's gonna form your structure. Now, basically this is more or less use, useless, I think, because this doesn't really give you any more crafting than the single block. So you are going to want to make a larger version of this, right? So the biggest the biggest that you can make, this is a five by five we have here, and then you're gonna add all these other blocks inside of here. So what can you add and what do they do? The quantum crafting unit is essentially just a placeholder for inside of here if you don't have the resources to completely fill um, the block, and it's also used as a crafting component in some of the other blocks. You have two tiers of storage, so you have 128 and 256, which is essentially like uh, crafting storage from regular AE, right? Except they're pretty significant, right? There's a there's a lot going on in here. Um, don't really see a reason why you'd make 128 million unless you're really strapped for resources. I would recommend just going straight to the 256, right? And then you can make this thing called a quantum data entangler, right? And if you look at the description inside the mod pack, it literally tells you that this block multiplies your storage times four, right? And you can only have one of these inside of your multi-block. So unless you're doing absolutely gigantic, massive crafts, I really don't see a need for you to have more than one of these 256 M quantum computer storages along with one of these. This will multiply it by four, right? So it, that's really going to give you enough to make some of the biggest, biggest crafts um, that the game can throw at you. But if you do need a second one of these, I would say that's probably the absolute max you would ever need for any sort of craft. Next, we have the quantum computer accelerators and the um, entirety of the space that's inside here, minus like the one block for the 256 and the one block for the quantum data entangler, is basically gonna be filled with all quantum computer accelerators just to make this as fast as humanly possible. So if you mouse over this, it does say that it provides eight co-processing units per thread. Um, and this block right here, the quantum computer multi-threader will again do the same thing as a data entangler and will multiply the amount of coprocessors inside the multi-block by four. So these are absolute must-haves, right? So at minimum, you're gonna have one data entangler, one multi-threader, and one quantum computer core, and basically uh, one of these 256s plus all the rest being filled up by the accelerators to make the fastest possible setup with this mod. All right, let's toss one of these together real quick. We're gonna put one data entangler. I'm gonna put one multi-threader. 
And then we're going to go ahead and grab one 256K storage. And then we're literally just going to fill the entire rest of them with all of these accelerators, right? And this is going to be the literal fastest that you can make this. Fill that up. Bam. You see the graphic changes when we built a full system. It's offline because it's not connected to anything. But that's pretty much how you make this structure. So now that we made this multi-block, we know how to use it, right? The real question that you want answered is, will it blend? No, just kidding. Is how fast is it and is it worth it, right? Compared to a normal system. Well, don't worry, we're here to find out. All right, so let's do a little speed test. Here, I have your traditional crafting setup, right? Mostly. I have two 256M mega crafting storages surrounded by co-processing units. And literally the more co-processing units apparently that you add, the faster this goes, I found. So I, I had this like stacked to the ceiling and it did get faster and faster and faster. But let's say on a practical level, right? This is what we have here. Um, we have all of our molecular assembler chambers surrounded by the um, pattern providers. And important to note, these don't work, right? With the quantum crafting computer, you cannot use regular ME extended pattern providers. It will not work. You need to use the mod's own interfaces to craft these items. So let's go ahead and do something with diamond blocks here. Let's make, uh, where's a 5X? 5x right so we're going to go ahead and do a 5x we're going to select a crafting cpu we're going to do the uh smaller one right so that's the one to my left here coprocessors 22 that's what you saw in there we're going to go ahead and hit start on this then we're going to go see in time frame right um this is how fast that it's going right so it's going to use this stuff over here you can see the blocks flashing in and out of there using the system right it's using this little box right here. And this is quite a bit of crafting storage, right? If you've played Minecraft, modded Minecraft for any amount of time, 256 million is quite a bit, or megabytes or whatever it is, I don't even know. Uh, but essentially we got 500K, right, of this, and that's basically how fast it's working. Now, is it in the most efficient setup right here? No, it's not. So don't judge me for that. But you can see how fast that this is taking, right? So we're just gonna go ahead and cancel that craft. Now we are going to use this beast over here and we're going to do the same exact thing. So let's take all this stuff out of here. Let's go ahead and say, hey, I want one 5X and then we're going to pick the bigger one, right? 704 coprocessors, right? There's not 704 in there, but we're using that 4X multiplier on the processors speed upgrades that we do have to get to this really crazy number. There it is right there. We're going to hit enter, start, look at this, bam, right? So the same craft is taking significantly less time than the other setup over here. Now I did go ahead and make this thing much chunkier than before. And we're going to go back in here. We're going to create one 5X and we're going to use the smaller processor. Now there's 88 co-process processors. We're going to start that and it is still not keeping up with the quantum crafter, right? It's taking uh, more than twice the amount of time to make it, even though it definitely is faster. Um, this is just the better solution, right? And the amazing thing about this structure is that it can perform as many operations simultaneously as you can throw at it, provided that you do not exceed your total crafting storage, right? So that is absolutely incredible. This is your all in one solution for end game crafting with AE2. One other quick thing I'm going to mention about these units here is that the config files can be changed to increase the minimum number of some of those crazy multiplier blocks inside of this structure here. So you may find that in the future, uh, mod pack authors may decide to bump up the limit to three, four, or five, which would further increase the speed of these things and make them really, really, really fast. Um, but they are very fast on their own, just in the regular default configuration. Um, so highly suggest that you incorporate this into your build in the newest versions of Minecraft. All right, that's gonna wrap up this video. Uh, hopefully it was informational. Hopefully it showed you something new that you did not know about this brand new mod for the latest versions of Minecraft. If you liked it, give the video a like. If you wanna subscribe to us, go ahead, but don't hold your breath for more videos. That's it for this one, Captain Jack out. And as always guys, stay poised.